Sorry for the slight mishap. Um, I think it is only proper that I now call on stage uh, the candidate himself uh, so that uh, he can speak and present his case uh, to us. I now invite the Honorable Raila Odinga to be found within the premises and brought forward. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was being uh, advised by His Excellency President Ruto that there is a Baba, uh, a title that seems to go to His Excellency Olesagun Obasanjo, and then there is Baba. <laughs> so, Your Excellency uh, Raila Omolo Dinga, the podium is yours. You can address us. Thank you. Hi. Your Excellency, President William Samoy Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya. Your Excellency, President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency, President Mama Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, President Salva Kiir, President of the Republic of South Sudan. And Your Excellency, Baba Onusegun Obasanjo, President, former President of uh, Republic of Nigeria. Then my brother, former President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Jakaya Mauricio Kikwete. My other brother from Burundi, uh, General Gervas Ndikarukubuka, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Burundi, and Brother James Kabere, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Rwanda. Distinguished diplomats, ladies and gentlemen, Hamjambo, good morning. I am so delighted to have opportunity to stand before you here this morning to see this distinguished audience here. I want to say that this is an occasion which the Lord has made, and let us be proud in it. Today, I stand before you here as a candidate for the chairperson of the African Union Commission. I'm personally encouraged and humbled by the collective support for my country and the Eastern African region. The official unveiling of my candidacy as Kenya's nominee for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission is a major impetus and milestone in my bid. And I'm so happy that my brothers and sisters have taken time to come and be here physically and personally today. <laughs> the 
The history of Africa is replete of low and high moments. Africa is widely considered the birthplace of mankind, whose political organization was reflected in great kingdoms across the continent. And as of today, the oldest species of humanoid has been discovered in this region. So in Ethiopia, in northern Kenya, in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. So there's no doubt that this is the home of mankind. However, the continent has suffered slavery, colonialism, humiliation, repeated aggression, and internal violent conflicts. However, excellencies, like the legendary Phoenix, Africa has risen from the ashes of these historical atrocities to make a full-blown arrival on the global stage. Consequently, you have heard slogans such as African Renaissance and Africa Rising. Nonetheless, I envisage an Africa where our visionary sloganeering will translate into strategic action for the transformation of our continent. Unfortunately, even as we rise, our continent still grapples with emerging challenges and vulnerabilities, including identity conflicts and wars, hunger, poverty, violent extremism, adverse climate change, acute unemployment among our youth, transboundary pandemics and infectious diseases such as mpox and other threats to human security and dignity. My plan is to work with you, Your Excellencies, and make the AU more people-centered and serve the interests of the vast voiceless majority of Africans. The African people should feel the AU in their lives. Excellencies, if elected chairman, I propose to utilize the transition period to criticize, critically analyze the existing proposals for reforms and building capacity of the AU Commission. The ultimate aim is to follow up on the implementation of the reports so far formulated. Certainly, the story of Africa is not all gloom and doom. Thanks to the work Your Excellencies are doing, Africa has been on an upward and positive trajectory in recent years. In February, the African Development Bank reported that Africa will account for 11 of the world's 20 fastest growing economies this year. The continent is set to remain the second fastest growing region after Asia. I deeply appreciate your efforts in restoring hope on the continent. And it is my wish to have a chance to complement your efforts as AUC, AU chairperson. Excellencies, throughout my leadership and service to the public, I have noted the significance of defining strategic goals and appreciating the influence of political dynamics on the outcomes of these goals. So decision-making must be backed by a balance between policy and geopolitics. I plan to work with you, Your Excellencies, to integrate this continent. You are one people who unfortunately are trying too hard to separate from each other. I have traveled the length and breadth of this beautiful continent, and I have seen the faces of Africa's future. I was involved in peace 
negotiations in Burundi with Madi Munyerere. I was involved as the mediator of the AU with the conflict in Côte d'Ivoire. I was involved in Mozambique. So I understand the continent. And I see the faces of our children full of hope and energy and unbound by the borders of yesterday. I dream of an Africa where those borders and colonial languages no longer divide us. We don't want to see Africans to be divided as Anglophones, Francophones, Lusophones. I want them to be Africa funds. From the hills of Kenya to the deserts of Sahara and the Kalahari, from the lakes of Great Rift to the rainforests of Central Africa, from Indian Ocean to the Atlantic, Africa must be one is resilience and hope for a bright future transmitted to our young people. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, my selection to be Kenya's candidate is not about one man's ambition, but an African's journey to serve the motherland. Indeed, I plan to constitute my cabinet of chairpersons with a continental outlook. I'm grateful that friends and eminent persons across Africa have volunteered to engage in my campaigns from the West, North, South, Central, and of course, Eastern Africa. Excellencies, I'm ready to serve. My heart is ready and my hands are steady and with your support, I shall get the opportunity to be of service to Africa, the cradle of mankind. I am made in Eastern Africa for Africa. <laughs> I have said that I'm an Afro-optimist as opposed to a pessimist. A pessimist are those people who have given up on Africa, who say Africa is a lost cause, a wasted continent. But Afro optimists are those people who believe in African development, that Africa can be developed with the efforts of the African people. This is what I believe in. I have come from the school that believes in the efforts of the founding fathers of our continent. Those who were visionary, who envisioned an Africa that was united. Kwame Nkrumah, Ahmed Sekouture, Gamal Abdel Nasser, uh, the late Emperor Haile Selassie, Jomo Kenyatta, Yamogi Ogingo Dinga, Malimu Julius Kabraga Nyerere, Kenneth Kaunda. Those were the founding, some of the founding fathers of our continent who believed that Africa will only develop if it is united. Nkrumah said that Africa must unite or perish. That is the school of which I'm coming. To be able to realize the dreams of the founding fathers, first we need peace on the continent. In 2013, they, they talked of silence in the guns. But in 2024, the guns are not silent on the continent. We will work to ensure that guns are silent so that we can be able to have a peaceful development. Secondly, Africa 
is a victim of climate change. Africa today suffers from twin disasters, droughts and floods on the continent. Yet Africa has emitted very little of the, 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 uh, the uh, carbon that is polluting the world. So Africa needs to be compensated. But this cannot, will not come if Africa goes to negotiate as individual countries. If you go and talk as Kenya, as Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Mozambique, Egypt, or Algeria, the rest, those major offenders will not listen to us. But when you go and talk as Africa, they must listen to us. We will be able to get a fair deal on the issue of climate change. We also need to green Africa. But in Africa is also home to the second largest carbon sink in the world, the Congo forest. But how do we continue to green Africa, to arrest the certification, southern advance of the Sahara Desert? These are issues, they are challenges which you are equal to. You can be able to deal with these issues effectively if you have got an effective organization in Addis Ababa. <laughs> African youth today drown in the Mediterranean, trying to go to get to greener pastures in Europe. It's a shame. We must arrest this trend and ensure that we create a conducive environment within the continent here. But these youth do not have to flee to go to Europe. And this will only happen if Africa works together as a, uh, as a united uh, continent. We know that Africa The richest continent is also the poorest in terms of living conditions of its people. This we must put to rest. We should not continue to blame moving forward again. Therefore, we need to be able to ensure that Africa uses the resources that it has effectively. We need also to ensure that Africa also trades with itself. Africa is wasting a lot of time searching for markets where they put very unequal terms to our goods coming from Africa. The inter-African trade today stands at only 15%. Inter-European trade stands at 70%. Inter-Asian trade stands at 60%. Even inter South American trade stands at 35%. We need to ensure that Africa trades more with itself. We need to address the constraining factors. One, the, the non tariff barriers which have been imposed by other African countries against goods from neighboring countries. More importantly, we need to address the issue of infrastructure infrastructure development in the continent that will make it easier for African countries to trade with each other. I have been the high representative of the African Union on the issue of infrastructure. So I know the major challenges that Africa faces in the issue of infrastructure. The Trans-African Highways, the Cape to Cairo, the Tunis to Cape, the Dakar through Khartoum to Djibouti, the Dakar, Lagos to Mombasa, the Beira to Lobito and Wallis Bay, the highest speed railway network in the continent, 
which are those are issues that require to be dealt with. The Lapset, the Lamu Port, South Sudan, Ethiopia, that will go, continue to Bangi and go all the way to, to the Cameroon port of Kribi, creating a land bridge that links the Atlantic Ocean and Indian Ocean and opening up the interior landlocked countries within the continent. These are some of the issues that can be dealt with and will deal with. Then, connecting Africa through high-speed fiber optic network. And then, to facilitate personal communication. Then, the issues of air transport. Air transport is a major challenge in the continent. We were talking about open skies to make air transport easier. Today, traveling across the continent is too expensive. You have to get permits to fly over countries, delaying movement, and make it too expensive. Flying over Europe is much easier than flying over Africa. We need to have a continental air control system within the continent so that people can travel from east to west, north to south without a problem. The other one is the issues of visas. My friend Aliko Dangote says that for him to travel across the continent he needs 35 visas. His French competitor does not need a visa to travel with a French passport in Africa. What a shame. In Europe, you only need a Schengen visa and you can travel across the entire Europe without a problem. We will also ensure that we reach a stage where we can issue an AU visa and enable people to travel across the continent without much of a problem. I am therefore want to conclude by saying that I am ready for Africa. And I believe in the story of the African lion. The lion is an African animal. It's a king of the jungle. The Cameroonian national soccer team is called uh, the Indomitable Lions. The soccer team of Senegal is called the Lions of Teranga. The soccer team of Morocco is called the Atlas Lions. Here in Eastern Africa, we call it the Simba. The king of the jungle. When the king roars, the jungle listens. So our story of the African lion, the African lion is giving a message to the Asian tiger. Tiger is the Asian animal. And I want my Asian friends here not to take offense. The African lion is giving a message to the Asian tiger. That you Asian tiger, you have danced on the stage alone for far too long. It's your time to quit. The European bear retreated to the North Pole long time ago and is freezing there in the ice. The American panther is also on the retreat. But I'm here as the African lion. I've been asleep in the jungles of the Congo, but now I'm awake and I'm sitting on African gold, African oil, African diamonds, African iron and uh, copper ores. I'm sitting on African bauxite, I'm sitting on African lithium and coltan and uranium. And I have the ability 
to transport all, to transform all these materials that I have into wealth for the benefit of my people and claim, and claim the 21st century as an African century. End of the message from African land. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Um, you can be seated. Indeed, uh, that's a very powerful message about uh, the African lion. Um, Your Excellency, uh, let me give very special recognition to the ambassadors from the Middle East, the Galtites. Uh, please be upstanding. Thank you so much for, for being present with us. Uh, let me also acknowledge that we have the Speaker of the Senate with us uh, in our midst. Now it is my pleasure and honor to invite His Excellency Rigabe Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya,